So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add a notebook widget uh, using PyGubu Designer. And then after you add the notebook widget to your project, I'll show you how to select tabs dynamically in your code. And you'll be able to get the selected tab. You'll be able to disable a tab and you'll be able to hide a tab. Here's an example. So I have two tabs here, a graphics tab and an audio tab. So let's say if I want to find out which tab is currently selected uh, in, in my code. So I'm in the audio tab. I'm going to click on get selected tab. It's going to choose, it's going to show me audio down on the console down here. If I choose graphics, get selected tab, it'll show graphics. And this one here, select tab, it lets me dynamically choose a tab without clicking on the tab. So this one, I have it set to uh, show the audio tab. So I'm going to click on it and it took me to the audio tab. So I'll show you how to do that. And similarly, I'll show you how to disable the current tab and I'll show you how to hide the current tab as well. I'll show you how to create this with PyGubu Designer. Hi, my name is Jobin and I'm an open source developer. My channel is called Jobin Pi and it's all about Python and Linux. Welcome to Jobin Pi. So I'm going to start with the new PyGubu project here. So under containers, I'm going to add a top level and I'm going to add a frame in that top level. Within that frame, I'm going to go to control and display or actually, no, sorry, it's under containers and I'm going to add a notebook widget. So now we have a notebook widget here, even though it doesn't seem like we have a notebook widget, it's actually there. A notebook widget needs tabs in order for it to, uh, to do anything meaningful. So, the neat thing about PyGubu is that it lets you easily add tabs and I'll show you how. So make sure the notebook widget is highlighted. When it is, go to PyGubu helpers at the top and then you'll see a notebook.tab. So click on that and then you'll see a tab subsection here, but you don't see the tab here just yet. So what we need to do next is to add a frame to this tab. So I'm going to go to containers going to add a frame and as soon as I add a frame the tab shows up okay so I'm going to add another tab but but watch this if I have that frame selected and if I go to PyGubu helpers and if I try to add another tab nothing happens in fact down here in the status section here on the bottom left hand side it says messages 5 and if I keep on clicking notebook.tab that number keeps increasing. That means there's a message that PyGubu wants to, uh, to show me. So I'm going to click on it. It says, warning, only one children allowed for TTK notebook tab. So this basically means, so we're trying to add a tab to the wrong widget. So what we have to do is click on the notebook widget and then try to add a tab. The point of me showing you this is to show you that it's it's important to actually have the notebook widget highlighted before you start adding more tabs. Okay, so we have our second tab added here and it's not showing up here because we have to add a frame to it. So I'm gonna add a frame and that shows up. So I think uh, two tabs is, is enough for this uh, demonstration. So I wanna change the text of those tabs. So I'm gonna click on the first tab here and from here where it says text, I'm gonna change it to graphics and this is an example of like an options window yeah so these are going to show the graphics options and the second tab i'm going to change to audio so i'm going to hide this messages pane uh, down here so i'm going to click on messages and that disappears then inside the frame that i'm in right now i'm just going to add a label and here i'm going to type audio frame. I'm going to go to the graphics frame here and I'm going to add another label. I'm going to call it graphics frame or that's what I'm going to change the text to. It's not the actual name of the label, it's just the uh, the text. Okay, and I want this 
label to uh, to be centered. So I'm going to click on the frame. I'm going to go to layout, and I'm going to give it a weight because I'm using the grid geometry manager. So I'm going to set the column to a weight of one. I'm going to set the row to a, a weight of one as well, so that centers it. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other frame. I'm going to set it to a weight of one and the row to a weight of one. And this this has nothing to do with the notebook widget. This is all based on the grid geometry manager um, specifically for this frame and this label. So now if I preview it, this is what it looks like. This is what we have so far. But notice how the notebook widget is really close to the edge of the window. So we should add some padding to make it look a little nicer. I'm going to click on the notebook widget and then under pad X, I'm going to put in 10. This is in the layout tab, by the way. And under pad Y, I'm going to put 10. There we go. So that looks a bit better. So we have uh, some padding around it. Okay. Then at the very top, I'm going to add another frame outside of the um, notebook widget. Actually, maybe not at the, yeah, actually I will at the, at the very top here. I'm going to add a frame. So it's going to go down here and I'm going to start adding some buttons, which will uh, be used for this demonstration. So the first button, I'm going to set it to select tab. I'm going to right click and duplicate. And from here, I'm going to set the second one to get selected tab going to keep going the third one disable tab and the last one hide tab okay so now I need to set the callback for it so so that it runs a specific method in our code so for the first one select tab I'm going to put in on select tab button clicked for this one on get selected tab button clicked for the third one on disable tab button clicked and the last one on hide tab button clicked okay so it's going to run these methods whenever the uh, the the button gets clicked so on the select tab button, it's going to run this method. On get selected tab, it's going to run this method. So we haven't obviously made those methods yet, but we need to tell it which methods we want to run. So now I'm ready to generate the code for this project. So I'm going to go to code and it's automatically generated here for me. If, if it's not generated for you, just click on the generate button. I'm going to copy it to the clipboard and in my Python IDE. I'm just going to paste it and I'm going to run it. I just want to make sure it works. Now I've, I've actually saved the user interface file, like the UI file in this project. So if you need to do the same, then you would just have to go to file, save as, and it'll save it as a UI file and just make sure that UI file is in the same folder as your Python project. Okay, so I'm going to run it now. So now this is in code and you'll see here, I have notebook widget demo.ui, which is the file that PyGubu uh, saves for me. So I'm gonna run it just to make sure it opens up and it does. If I click on these buttons, nothing happens, which is fine. Okay, so I'm gonna program the, the first one, select tab. What do I want this button to do? I want it to select the audio tab. So I want this to select the second tab for me automatically. So how do I do that? So I'm gonna put in pass here for now because there's something else I need to do here. I need to get a reference to that notebook widget. So if I go back to PyGubu Designer, I'm gonna click on the notebook widget here. Take note of the ID, which is the name of the widget. It's called notebook one. You can change it to anything you'd like pretty much, but I'm just gonna leave it as notebook one. So I need to go back into my code here again. And then from here, I can type in self.notebook1 equal builder.getObject. So this is getting the notebook widget from PyGubu. And here we'll pass in the name. So we know that the name was notebook1. So I'm just going to type in notebook1 here. 
And I want to help out my IDE so that it knows what notebook one is because get object doesn't return the, the type. Essentially, it's just going to return the widget, but this variable doesn't know what kind of widget this will return. So I'm going to give it a type hint. So from here, I'm going to type from TK enter import TTK. And then here I'm going to put in self.notebook1 colon, and I'm going to type in ttk.notebook. So I'm telling my Python IDE that this will be a notebook uh, object. And the point of that is now when I type in, so I'm inside the button now, on select tab button clicked. If I type in self.notebook1 and press dot, I get a whole bunch of notebook1 related methods. If I don't have this, I'm going to comment this out. And if I try to do the same thing, self.notebook1 dot, it gives me nothing because my IDE doesn't know what notebook one is. It doesn't know what type of variable it is. So I'm going to put that type int back. And if I press dot here again, it happily shows me all the different methods for the notebook widget. Okay, so going back to this, I want to select the audio tab. And the audio tab is the second tab. So I'm gonna run that project here again. Remember how we have graphics and audio? So when I click on select tab, I want the audio tab to get selected for me without having to click on the audio tab. So to do this, we type in the following, self.notebook1.select, and then we give it a tab ID. So tab ID equal one. And let's just run this to make sure it works. So I'm gonna click on select tab and it should select audio, and it does. So how do I know that one is going to bring up the audio tab? How did I figure that out? Well, it's because graphics is tab ID zero and audio is tab ID one. If I add, add another tab, it'll be tab ID two. Okay, so that's how you can select a tab uh, through code by clicking this and then it just uh, selects the, the tab that you want. The next one is get selected tab button click. So this one, get selected tab. So I want to know which tab is selected through my code. So I'm gonna write down here, get the selected tab text. So here I can write tab text equal self.notebook1 dot tab so it wants the tab ID but I don't know which tab ID is actually selected so there's a solution for that I can just type in current as a string and that will give me the 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 the, the tab ID of the uh, the currently selected tab and what I want from the selected tab is the text so i just pass that in as a string as well and then i print tab text let's just see if that works so i have graphics selected so get selected tab and it should show it down here it does if i select audio get selected tab and it does yeah if you wanted to see what other information that you can get from the current tab just remove the text section and then you'll be able to see all the different uh, options you can get. So I can click on get selected tab. So, you know, you can get the sticky information, the, the padding, the state that the tab is in right now. It's normal, which means, you know, it's not disabled. The text, which we worked with, with this is what we got before. Image, compound, underline. So there's all these different uh, from all this different information that you can get for the for the current tab. If you want to find out which tab ID is currently selected, then you can basically do it this way. So tab ID equal self dot notebook one dot select. And what this will do is it'll give it the address to the 
tab that's currently open. So I'm going to put in tab ID here so you can see it. So you don't pass anything to select. And when you do that, I'm going to click on get selected tab. And it shows this. It's not a, a, a number, but if I click on audio, get selected tab, you'll see it says frame two instead of frame. So you can use this to get the tab ID of the currently selected um, tab in the notebook widget. Okay, so I'm just going to undo this so we can go back into getting the selected text of the current tab. So I'm going to put in tab current and text and let's just change this back to tab text and print tab text. Let's just make sure that still works. Get selected tab. Yep, it does. Moving on. The next one is disable the the tab. So I'm going to write here, disable the selected tab. So this one's actually very similar to the one we did above. So instead of getting a value, we're going to be setting a value. So self.notebook1.tab, the current tab, state equal disabled. And let's just run this. So this should disable the graphics tab and it does. And the next one is hide the tab. So hide the selected tab. So that's going to be similar to that one. So I'm just going to copy it and paste it. And instead of disabled, I'm just going to set it to hidden and that should hide the current tab. So we shouldn't see the graphics tab anymore hide tab and then it's gone so if you wanted to bring that tab back you would have to know its index so here I'm going to hide it then I'm going to bring it back again so self.notebook1.tab and tab id equal zero state equal normal so it should hide it and then immediately show it again so we shouldn't actually see any difference and that works. So it's, it took us to the audio tab, but if I click on graphics again, hide tab, it took it and brought it back again. So this is how you would bring it back. And this is similarly how you could re-enable the, uh, the, the tab again if you disable it. So if you disable the tab, you can set it to enabled again by setting it to normal. And if you hide it, you can set the state to normal to make it re-show again. The notebook widget is a very versatile widget and it's one of my favorites. I use it in most of my projects. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Until the next one, thanks for watching.